<laughs> After your surgery, you gotta talk a little bit about it. Without listening to the actual result of your singing, do you sense uh, some small changes that maybe people aren't aware of? Locally, of course. Um, I know, I know mm -hmm. the things that I can't do anymore that I used to be able to do. Yeah. Um, I used to be able to sing a show and then drink until 8 o'clock in the morning and scream ACDC on my bus with a bus full of people partying all night and still sing the next day. And everybody was always like, how does he do that? It's impressive. Well, sooner or later, <laughs> that's going to come back to haunt you. Because if you don't take care of the thing that's taking care of you, it's going to come back and bite you in the ass. Mm -hmm. And it did. And, um, you know, it's... Uh, uh, but now, I just warm up a little longer, you know, try and take care of it. Um, and it's still been good to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I... Uh, there were some harmonies on this record that, uh, like, some of the melodies were really high. And the harmonies, I always like a higher harmony because a high harmony always creates more energy, I find. It really creates this, like, this, uh, this level of... It makes people want to listen. You know, it, it, it sort of, it almost like commands attention when there's that thing that's just, it's kind of screaming at you and it's kind of high and it's like, oh, and you don't even know, like, some people, I would assume most people don't even know it's there, but it's there and it does add this energy to it, which is great. Um, and so I would sing these, you know, high melodies and then have to sing these really high harmonies. And some days, you know, if I warmed up and just really took care of the voice and I'd go in there and scream. And you see the whole band turn around and, and they're looking at me and then and they, they're just sitting there looking at me and I'm like, I'm like, what? Did I nail it? Was I flat? And they're like, no, no, dude, you're hitting it. And I'm like, oh, okay, good. Did it sound bad? And they're like, no, they're like, no, dude, it's really hot. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, good. <laughs> you know, and then off you go, and you know, and you start singing again. Yeah. Since Nick and Bob's back started putting out record, lots, lot has happened in the music industry, as you mentioned, with Spotify and stuff. And, and in what other way, besides going to Spotify from radio nowadays, are you trying to adapt to an, an ever-changing climate? Well, it's not, I mean, my, my, my job doesn't really change. It's more the way we get music to the fans that changes. That's all. It's just a different delivery service. Um, and before I'm done, there will be, there'll be ten more. There will be ten more. Mm -hmm. When MySpace showed up, everyone was like, oh, there can never be another MySpace. Mm -hmm. Then Facebook <laughs> showed up, and everyone was like, oh, there can never be another Facebook. There, yeah. there will always be another Whatever it is. Absolutely. It was like, now, Twitter? <laughs> there can never be another Twitter. It's like, Instagram is the new Twitter. Sure. It's, uh, there's always going to be yeah. something else. It's very interesting to see what comes after Facebook. Because Facebook has so, so, so like a vast majority of We them. all thought that about MySpace. Remember? <laughs> Absolutely. Remember? Yeah, was, I remember. Yeah. Something's going to come along and Mark Zuckerberg's going to get charged with pedophilia. Everyone's going to leave Facebook, and someone's going to step in and be like, just been waiting for that moment. It's going to be the new Facebook. That's all there is to it. I mean, it, it's always that. And I hope it's pedophilia. Because <laughs> I don't like Mark Zuckerberg, a little fuck. That's so cruel. <laughs> so almost every other band in the business like, that gets successful, at some point they start to release albums like more infrequently. But Nickelback has always, almost... Always come out with records like every second year or every third year. So, mm -hmm. so what makes you guys being so productive still? Um, I think liking what we do and enjoying it, enjoying who we're doing it with. You know, we're not a band who dislike being with each other. We love each other. You know, we're a family, and. Um, I can't imagine being in a band with somebody I didn't like. Uh, that would be awful. You know, that'd be worse than a marriage. Marriage you can get out of. 
You know, this is my career. Yeah. You're st you'd be stuck with that person. And we've seen them. We've all seen how many. There's countless. Yeah, there are. Um, and they just can't stand each other. Um, and that's sad. That's unfortunate. But uh, I never want to be one of those. I hope I'm, we are never one of those. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's great, you know, we make music together, we go out and tour music together, and, and, um, and so far the fans are just always there for us, so we're really lucky in that way. Mm -hmm. But still, is it possible to re rely on the long-time fans all the time, or are you in a position now that you need younger fans to come to the party as well? Well, that, we, we noticed on the last European tour, that we did. No, no, the one before that actually. That was the first time we really noticed it. We're like, hold on a second. When did our first record come out? It's like, I don't know, like at that point in time it was like, I don't know, 14 years ago. I'm like, so if you were six and your parents were listening to it all the time, yeah. you're now 20 and you're in our front row. And that would be one of the older ones because there was like 13, 14 year olds. We would get off stage every single night and be like, did you see how young the fans were in the front? I mean, these are kids that grew up on the music now. Um, and that's interesting. And it's also painful because it makes me feel old. <laughs> I'm like, how fucking old am I? I'm not even that old. No. You're my age. Yeah. Oh, so you're young. Yeah, you're 42? Three. 43? <laughs> yeah. You're a 73 baby? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was thinking about like younger fans. Like All the huge bands have a couple of generations of fans. Otherwise, they won't last. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Like look at like the Rolling Stones or... Yeah. Stones. It just goes on and on and yeah. on. Hopefully. I mean, that's what you hope for. Yeah. We never thought about that. We never, ever thought about that. We just saw... The one chunk of people that were coming with us, yeah. and we just always thought about it like that. We never, ever once conceptualized a front row that had a bunch of very young teenagers in it mm -hmm. until two European tours ago. And that one was mind-opening. And we were flattered, you know, honored. Like, these kids are spending their hard-earned money to come and see us. Mm -hmm. Or their parents hard earned money. <laughs> or somebody's, yeah. yeah. But I mean, I didn't spend my hard earned money to go see Metallica the first time. I spent my mom's hard earned <laughs> money to go see Metallica the first time. And that's how it works, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and it becomes this uh, cyclical thing. Uh, and that's, that's wonderful, you know? And if we can keep that going, well, we just want to keep this whole thing going as long mm -hmm. as it can, you know? This has been a crazy ride. It's been great. We've all had a lot of fun. And, uh, and, and, and that's definitely a motivating factor for us, you know, going back to your very first question, yeah. you know, because we love it, you know, and we want to just keep doing it as long as we possibly can. Okay. So when, about live bit, when you're on a bigger stage in an arena, do you like focus on anything special like in the back or in the front or do you like just try to look into the emptiness kind of? Um, it's hard to see sometimes, and you got a lot of lights in your face, yeah. so that's, that's, that's really tough. Most of the time, I'm just, you know, I'm listening because I've got the in-ears in, and, and we're just, I'm trying to sing the best I can, play the best I can, you know, and reproduce every single song the best I can, so it sounds like the memory that every single person that bought a ticket wants to relive live. Nice. That was a cool. fucking great answer. Yeah, <laughs> Even halfway through, I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but with families and kids and stuff, and that's, that's, <laughs> that's what I was... Yeah. That's so stupid. Yeah, absolutely. No <laughs> one ever turns back to them, so like, good answer! <laughs> sure. <laughs> so we kept families and kids and stuff and like different things happening at different stages in life. Is touring life as uh, attractive now as it once was really? Well what we've done is, you know, back in the day we would try and kill ourselves mm -hmm. to try and tour. 
We really would just, just, oh my God, we just murder ourselves. Um, and uh, we were just made of titanium. But you do get burnt out. This one time, we told our, our booking agent to try and kill us. We said, try and kill us on yeah. this tour. And in Canada, we played 44 shows in, I can't even remember, a very short period of time. And we did uh, A markets. No, I think it was both A and B markets the mm -hmm. whole way out. And then, and then all B markets on the way back. Like, so you'd be playing to in smaller hockey rinks, like mm -hmm. 7,000, 8,000. And then you'd be playing some of the bigger ones, 13, 14, 15,000, mm -hmm. all the way back, all the way across mm -hmm. to Toronto. And then we went way out east. And then on the way back, we did all B markets, I think. So it was just every little. If you had a hockey rink, <laughs> we were showing up and we were playing yeah. the whole way across. And I remember when I got done that tour, I was like, okay, you win. You win, you win, you win. <laughs> I don't want to do that again. That hurt. Yeah, because um, yeah, you do almost die. Like, you know, you're doing three, four in a row. Yeah. Four shows in a row. At that point... Whoever gets the fourth show is not getting even close to their money's worth. No. Because you're doing your best yeah. to hold on. And that thing is moving. And you're just, you know, the song starts. And you got to try and keep this going. And, yeah. and at that point in time, it, it, you're, not, you're not singing your best. You're not playing your best. Um, and that's, that's not fair to the fan. Um, so now... We're at this, we're at this crazy ACDC pace. <laughs> Every other day. Every other day. <laughs> show on, show off. Show on, show off. Show well, on. It's nice to have that luxury. And like, yeah. Small bands can't have that luxury, so they're playing like 25 shows in, in a month or something. <sighs> and they're out in a small tour bus. They're in yeah. the band sometimes. Yeah, I've well, done it. Young, I'll be, I've done it. Yeah. We did 17 shows in a row once. Yeah. 17. No oh, break. How old were you then? Remember? Oh, 29, 28, wow. 29, something yeah. like that, somewhere in 